The book of Mark, chapter number 2, starting with verse number 23, we find these powerful words. Jesus went through the wheat fields of the Sabbath, on the Sabbath. As the disciples made their way, they were picking the heads of wheat. The Pharisees said to Jesus, look, why are they breaking the Sabbath law? He said to them, haven't you ever read what David did when he was in need? When he and those with him were hungry. During the time when Abathur was high priest, David went into God's house and ate the bread of the presence, which only the priests were allowed to eat. He also gave bread to those who were with him. Then he said, the Sabbath was created for humans. Humans weren't created for the Sabbath. This is why the human one is Lord even over the Sabbath. Jesus returned to the synagogue. A man with a withered hand was there. Wanting to bring charges against Jesus, they were watching Jesus closely to see if he would heal on the Sabbath. He said to the man with the withered hand, Stand up, where people can see you. Then he said to them, Is it legal on the Sabbath to do good or to do evil, to save life or to kill? But they said nothing. Looking around at them with anger, deeply grieved at their unyielding hearts, he said to the man, Stretch out your hand. So he did, and his hand was made healthy. At that, the Pharisees got together with the supporters of Herod and to plan all to destroy Jesus. This is the word of God for the people of God. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for this day. I pray, Lord God, that I will not quench you from being heard or being felt, or being experienced by your people. Help us all to better understand your will. In the name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. In our text today we discover that Jesus didn't always stay in a religious box. Since Jesus often broke traditions, he broke rules, he broke religious laws. And it was very difficult for many of the devout followers of God at that time to accept Jesus' actions as being good. Since on the surface, or since by face value, it really appeared that Jesus did not take tradition seriously. On the surface, it looked as if Jesus didn't even take God the Father seriously. And the reason is the Sabbath day was a very, very important for the people in this text today, and also to people today. It was a special day. It was a day for the Jewish people to set aside work, to rest, on the Sabbath day. It was a day for them to go from sundown on Friday to sundown on Saturday to honor God and to respect Him. Because the Bible or the word of the Torah at that time commanded them to do so. The Sabbath was considered to be a day of joy and a time to consult with prophets. You see, during this time, prophets were consulted because they were considered to be God's mouthpieces and were called to reveal God's will and counsel to others. The people sought prophets because they believed they were inspired teachers who received direction and they could hear from God. 
so that they could be helped to navigate the challenges and or different situations they faced in life. The Sabbath was to be held in high regard. As a matter of fact, there were 39 rules on the Sabbath that were to be, that were to be followed so that the participant's soul could be revived for good. Some of the rules consisted of you couldn't finish products, project, projects, such as repair work. You could not do that during the Sabbath. You couldn't even cook. Oh, my Lord, what would that do to our traditions today? Amen. I think about grandmother's Sunday meals. Guess what? That didn't happen then. They couldn't even untie knots that were tied before then. No harvesting and no building, just to name a few of the rules. But folks, this was the way. This was the way that people could honor God and could respect God. And they were trained to commit to developing these practices so that they could be equipped to do the right thing for the Father. But then Jesus came along, who in fact actually claimed to be sent by God, doing things that were unlawful to even God's rule. We can get a lot from this scripture today. And with the Lord's help, I can hopefully encourage us how we can apply this word into our lives. The first thing is, it's important for us here at this dwelling to accept the fact that our worship our time of Sabbath, our time for joy, our time for seeking God may be interrupted from time to time. With that understanding, we need to be mature and to try our best not to be a stumbling block, to not overreact like our brothers and sisters did in this passage of Scripture. It says they were outraged. And they wanted to get rid of Jesus because he interrupted their worship. They thought they were actually attacking Jesus, but we find out they were actually bringing an accusation against God the Father himself. Unknowingly, they were fighting against God. So if we ever find ourselves, even in this setting, even though we lay everything out to try to our a best, the best of our ability to ensure that we have a system or a service that's in order, we've got to be careful when things may not go exactly according to plan. The scripture reveals that to us. We've got to accept that God is oftentimes spontaneous. Amen. He may choose to do something that we did not anticipate. We go on to discover appropriate reasons for worship to be interrupted. We see here in the scripture that Jesus' response was, don't you remember what you read about David, who at one time in between battles, he was hungry and people who were with him were hungry. And he went into the holies of holies, a place where only priests could go because he knew there was bread there. They knew that there was food there. And that food was only supposed to be 
for God and for the priest to go and participate to receive. But David went on in to feed someone. What we find out here, church, is what David did proved that hunger was allowed to take priority over ritual law. In other words, if we're in here having a wonderful time worshiping our Lord and someone was to come busting in these doors saying they are hungry, we need to give them priority. Amen. Why? Because when a person is hungry, their blood sugar levels drop, their stomach will begin to growl, they can even have headaches, they can become irritable, irritable, and they can also have difficulty in concentrating. We learned that with students, amen? That's why we have the Union Backpack Program to feed children because we realize that if a child is hungry, they are able to focus, amen? So if someone was to come in here hungry, we ought to feed them to help get their bellies full so that they could concentrate on the Lord, so they can learn for the Lord. We know that there's natural hunger, but we also know that there's a spiritual hunger that from time to time people will have, and they will need to be fed spiritual food, truth that will set them free. So if someone comes in here in the midst of our stillness and bust through the doors and come running right to this altar, you don't have to reach for your gun right away. Amen. We have a safety team. But be patient and be still because perhaps God is sending someone who needs to be fed spiritual food, amen? Our worship may be interrupted so that someone can be fed. And if that was to happen, that's okay. Someone may interrupt the service because they need deliverance. Because they need healing. They need to be given life. We read in a passage of scripture, the man with the mither of hand had a need. And the interruption from their Sabbath was necessary so that his need was met. Why do we need to be mindful of that? Why do we need to be mature in that? Because when someone is delivered, healed, or given life through Christ Jesus, that is a very sign and or proof to us that the kingdom of God is at hand. Amen. You want to know if God's blessing our dwelling place? Observe the lives of people. And if you see them change for the glory of God, that's something divine, amen. Deliverance from affliction is a sign of the kingdom. Why do we know that and why do we say that? Because Jesus did those things, didn't he? He went out bringing sight to the blind. He went out setting the captives free. He went out sharing the love of God so people could be set free. And if that was to happen here, to God be the glory. To God be the glory. Finally, why should we embrace certain interruptions? Because God may be testing your heart. In our passage today, we need to take note that Jesus never accused the people in this setting from not trying to do well. 
he said actually the Sabbath was designed for humans. It was a design for them to grow closer to God. It was a design for them to enjoy and be at peace and receive and feel God's warmth. But he goes on to say it's a matter of the heart because in a sense he's saying whenever your rules become a hindrance from somebody being delivered, that it's people that you need to give priority to. That helping others trumps the Sabbath law. So he never said you weren't trying. He never said you weren't doing something bad. But instead he alluded that this is an issue of the heart. Keeping too strict may hinder God's movement. So Trinity, let's allow this space of worship to be open. Let's allow this place of worship to be a place where if God chooses to interrupt, that we'll be okay, amen. And I also want to encourage you all to, to accept that there may be interruptions. To me, that's a sign that the church is growing. And watch and pray so that people can be delivered, healed, and given life. I also want to encourage y'all to keep on doing the good work. Amen. For I remember a few years ago, we had an interruption, didn't we? A young man came and took over the service. And we got through that. But one of the things that really impressed me so much about this church is that everybody I talked to after that interruption, one of the first things they asked was, how was that young man doing? For those of you who may not know what happened, we had in the middle of the service a, a young man who just began to read scripture loudly and disrupt the service. The choir couldn't even sing. The preacher couldn't even preach. And he kept going and going and going. And thankfully, we had a few members here who recognized the individual and helped calm him down and lead him to the back. We went on to serve communion. And the next thing I know, law enforcement came busting in the door. I was thinking, whoa, are they coming for communion? No, someone, they were, they were watching online and they notified the police because they were really concerned about us. After all that happened, this lets me know that a spirit of grace and patience and long-suffering is in this church because the majority of the people who came and talked to me from this church after that interruption asked, how was that? individual doing. Somewhere along the way you recognized that people deserve priority over our order of worship. So let's accept interruptions. Let's be prepared in case we are interrupted again. Let's watch and pray so that people can be delivered, healed, or given life. If you're the type of person who gets ill whenever interruption happens, perhaps it's time for you to pray and be patient and seek God. Have God touch your heart and show you that the most important thing that we can allow happen in this place is provide an environment and the freedom for people who ever desire to get close to God. As Callie plays a little music, we'll give you an opportunity to, opportunity to respond to this service today.
Thank you so much for being here with us today. We do have a request uh, for Brother Fred Herndon for a blessing. Uh, he has a very important procedure forthcoming. And uh, Fred, we invite you to come forward. And if you're here with us today and you feel led to come and lay hands on our brother's shoulder, we invite you to do so at this time. Um, but I do ask our lay servants to come and support Fred. <laughs> I've asked the preacher to lay his blessings on me. I'm going to I guess face uh, going into older age, I'm going to have a stent put in right down in here at the end of this month. So I ask for your prayers and as we get close to that time. Thank you. Appreciate it.
our benediction. Thank you so much for being here with us today. Uh, before our benediction, how about we have our congregational response with the reciting of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. On the third day, He rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. For thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting.